Okay, let's go then. Hello everyone, thanks for being here today. Welcome to the sixth webinar of the Triple Open Science Training Series. And today's session will focus on visual data discovery for the social sciences and humanities. Uh, just a piece of information on today's webinar. The session will be recorded and will be made available afterwards. And you can find all the information and materials related to past and future events on the training events page of the Triple website, which you can see here. At the end of the session, there will be dedicated time for question and answers. So please feel free to write in the chat during the presentation and I'll make sure I collect them and will address them to Michaela at the end of the, of the training session. A few words on triple upcoming events. We have planned in February 2022 a training on co-design and user experience which will be presented by Paula Forbes, which is a triple product partner. And she's from Abertay University. And in March, we'll hold another training event on the trust building system, which will be one of the innovative services of the GoTriple platform. And it will be presented by project partners, Gael van Weyenberg and Maxim Bouillard. At the end of the training, I'll uh, share with you a survey to collect your feedback on the training and uh, it will be on Menti, but I'll get back to this after Michaela's presentation. Now, talking about Michaela, I'm happy to introduce Michaela and uh, I thank her very much for being with us today. Michaela is a community manager at the charitable nonprofit organization, uh, Open Knowledge Maps and her focus of interest lies on in knowledge management in the digital era and on how to foster the transition to an open science infrastructure ecosystem. She was a nominated member of the European High Level Advisory Group Open Science Policy Platform from 2016 to 2020. And in triple, she's mainly involved in work packages six and eight. Now, today's webinar, uh, its main goal will be to explore the following questions. How can GoTriple support exploring research topics with visual search? And what is the added value of knowledge maps and stream graphs in research discovery? I'll now pass the floor over to Michaela. Stop sharing my screen. And I wish you all a very pleasant and interactive training. Thank you very much, Lotti, for the nice introduction. I will now share my screen with the presentation. Please let me know if it worked. It's good. Good, perfect. Thanks a lot. So welcome everybody. I'm very happy that I can present to you today first uh, the possibility that we offer through the triple, the Go Triple platform that is developed in the triple European project that provides you a visual discovery means uh, focused on the SSH area. Uh, this, uh, the visual discovery services have been developed by the project partner Open Knowledge Maps, of which I am the community manager. And uh, in today's session, uh, I will first now give you a brief overview of what is planned, what you can expect from it. Um, to make sure that we really uh, meet your needs, that from you who are coming from the SSH community, I would like to do a very short warm up discussion about your challenges that you face when you are trying or when you are discovering uh, new resources for your research. In a second part, I would like to give you an introduction on open knowledge maps, the service that we are providing. And then in the main part, I will introduce you to the Go Triple discovery platform with a particular focus on the visual discovery features that we have provided in the current beta version. And finally, I will give you two live tutorials on how you can use the uh, visual discovery services. One is how you can visually explore research topics with GoTriple. And the second is how you can recognize trends in research. Finally, we will then have some time for a Q&A session and to wrap up the, uh, the, the training. For us, since uh, GoTriple is in a beta stadium, 
uh, it would be also very great to collect your feedback uh, from what uh, your experience or uh, your impression is after the introduction that I will, give, uh, that I will be giving you. Uh, and of course, uh, any ideas that you have, uh, how we could improve the system. Well, let's jump right into it. Uh, I would like to start the session with uh, this image that was published last year in May, along with a science article titled, Scientists are drowning in COVID-19 papers. Indeed, when we explore scientific knowledge, we are confronted with a literal flood of literature. 2.5 to 3 million papers are published each year, which makes it very hard to get an overview of a research field, and once you have it, to keep this overview. The COVID pandemic has made this problem even more evident. It triggered immediately basically an explosion of knowledge with made more than 200,000 papers published to date. Due to the sheer number of publications that are released uh, in research, gaining an overview of a topic, of a specific topic, and isolating leading and relevant information is a highly challenging task. And uh, now I would like to start a short discussion with you. We are not going to focus on the challenge of COVID-19, of course, but we would like uh, to light a bit, uh, to shed a bit of light on the uh, issues or challenges that you face in the SSH area. And for that, I would like to open a brief discussion round, uh, asking you, how do you get an overview of an unknown research field in your daily work? And what are the problems and challenges that you are facing? If someone of you wants to speak up, please just raise your hand. Anyone willing to share their experiences? We not, we're just in, all in the same group. We're not going into breakout rooms, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. I think for me, I think I would maybe tend to try and find a review paper. Now I know that open knowledge maps exist. Of course, I got to open knowledge maps because that's great for getting an overview. But before I knew that existed, I think I'd probably uh, some kind of a review paper on the subject to get an overview from there. Um, but yeah, it's really quite difficult, especially if it's a new topic that you're moving into, different if you've kind of built up knowledge of, an, of a topic, but if it's something completely different, it can be quite difficult. Thanks a lot, Paula. Yes, Richard. I think, <clears throat> I think uh, for myself, uh, to, get an, to get an overview of an uh, of of an unknown research field is is uh, I, I dare say uh, to be to to do the old fashioned thing is to go visit uh, uh, your, your your library your university library uh, and schedule a, a a research interview with a librarian who can help you get a handle um, on a search terms search terminology. Uh, how to search uh, search databases and such. Um, that's that, I mean that might be kind of old fashioned in the Google, the age of Google. But, uh, it is uh, it is probably the, the the easiest way to get an overview of uh, uh, of a, an owner research field. Thanks a lot, Richard. Francesca, you have also raised your hand. Yes. So for the first question. I agree with uh, Richard and also with Paul. I mean, uh, I also use, I have to be honest, if it's an unknown research field, I start with Wikipedia, which offer a very uh, simple access point to, but the, the, the problems and the, the challenges, I think from my point of view, they rely on a trust issue. So it depends on, on trust. If I know a scholar is a good scholar in a different topic than the one I'm looking into, then I trust him in any case or her. So it's a kind of network of trust. 
and uh, yeah, I think that's all. Thanks, Francesca. Uh, I'm not sure if Richard wanted to add something because your hand is still raised. Otherwise, uh, if not, thanks a lot for your input here. It's always very good to hear uh, from the different disciplines um, what your approach is and, and what your challenges are that you're facing. Um, now, uh, I would like to continue and give you a short introduction. First, uh, to enter in the issue or the challenge of online literature research. So a common way for discovering scientific knowledge now, uh, if you want to use the internet, is to turn on your favorite search engine. Here in this example, we see Google Scholar, and you can type in the name of a research field. Here, for example, educational technology. When you do this, usually hundreds of thousands, if not millions of results show up in the result. And of course, it's impossible to read that many papers. So what you usually can do is to turn to a highly cited overview work. So here we come to the trust uh, point uh, that we heard before. So uh, usually if something is highly cited, this uh, also um, has, has to do with, of course, that it's a well-trusted or a well-received uh, publication. And then you can go through it, read through it, uh, follow up the references that are in there, and then you can go to the next one. The problem is, of course, that this process takes weeks, if not months, before you can then, uh, based on that, create a mental model of the topic. Indeed, in the most PhD studies, the first year only is dedicated to this process. And unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of innovation when it comes to discovery systems. So for instance, in Google Scholar, uh, you don't get a lot of support for creating this mental model. This makes it very hard to get an overview of a field and once you have it to keep this overview. We can also see this in the data. We have a high unsightedness of publications. Depending on the field of research, you can have between 7% up to 63% of unsightedness of publications. It gets even worse when you go to the data sets. A study showed that 85% of published data sets are unsighted. But the biggest problem is indeed the transfer to practice. Even in an application-oriented discipline such as, such as medicine, only a small percentage of research results ever gets transferred to practice, and if so, with a considerable delay. Based on this background, we took the decision that now it is time to change the way we discover research. And we wanted to provide a missing link between the accessibility and the discoverability of scientific knowledge online. This was basically uh, the birth hour of open knowledge maps. Um, first, I would like to introduce who we are. As already, as we already heard in Lottie's introduction, we are a charitable nonprofit organization with the goal to revolutionize discovery. We want to do this for science, of course, but also making it available for society at large. Our mission is to create a visual interface to scientific knowledge based on knowledge maps. We do not only want to do this for a single domain, region, or discipline, but for all of science and research. And this should be done, as already mentioned, for science and also for society in a rev revolutionary way. We want also to do this in the most open way possible and create an inclusive, sustainable, and equitable infrastructure. As a charitable nonprofit, we want to enable everyone to benefit from scientific knowledge, independent of their age, geography, or stakeholder group. To do all of that, we strive to fund open knowledge maps in a collective effort. We invite organizations to become supporting members and to co-create the platform with us. So what is exactly that distinguishes us from other literature discovery services? The knowledge maps approach is what we have implemented in our innovative visual interface. Instead of long lists, the search results are displayed in bubbles, similar to the example that you see here. 
Uh, and the results of your research, uh, of, of your search, here in the example, we have the search term heart diseases. They are already grouped in relevant subtopics that are depicted by these bubbles. So in this example, you see risk factors, types of diseases and prevention, and the resources associated to these subtopics are already grouped within these bubbles. At a glance with our knowledge maps, you get an immediate overview of key topics in your search area and the relevant resources are already grouped within and can be accessed directly by navigating through the, through the bubbles. Now I would like to give you a very quick uh, demo of open knowledge maps, how it looks uh, on our website. When you go to open knowledge maps, you can create a map of your own. The search interface is very simple and is of course also a uh, reminding of the Google Scholar uh, or of Google uh, search uh, index. Uh, you can choose between PubMed, the large life sciences database and the Bielefeld academic search engine base, which at the moment uh, indexes more than 270 million documents from all disciplines. Now, um, in this example, I will put in the term psychology and click on go. And then Open Knowledge Maps creates a map for you. In theory, let's try to reload. Here it is. Very good. Ah, now it's gone again. Well, luckily I, no, here it is. Um, the map that you have, that you can see now that has been created is very similar to the uh, simplified example that I showed you before. So here the bubbles reflect important subtopics of psychology. For instance, comparative psychology, teaching resources in this bubble, or educational psychology, general psychology in this bubble, or in the large bubble, history and philosophy of science and also general psychology. If you have found a bubble that is interesting to you, such as this one, you can just click into it and then zoom into the resources. You can now inspect the papers individually, first by hovering over them. What we have implemented here is also that you very quickly can see which resources are open access. They are marked here with this symbol. And on the right side, you get the list view uh, when you are in the bubble, uh, just the papers that are within this bubble are displayed. Uh, you can search within the bubble, so basically within the, uh, the, the publication within the bubble, and you can also sort them just displaying uh, the open access sources or any sources and sort them by relevance, title, authors, and year. By clicking on the paper, you can then inspect also the metadata. We have implemented here uh, the abstract and the title, and you can of course, uh, go to the page uh, where you can download the paper. But here in this case, especially of course for the open access publications, you can also view the publication directly in the interface without needing to leave open knowledge maps. What we have included here as well is the first inter in, um, interactive uh, feature. We have implemented hypothesis where you can, when, once you're logged in, make annotations, either highlight or annotate. And this is a very easy method for yourself to uh, work and annotate the papers, but of course also to share them with your community or in the public. Good. This was very, the very quick demo of open knowledge maps. The advantages that we see is that you can get a bird's eye view of the field with the most relevant topics and related resources at a glance. It helps you to identify relevant concepts. Sometimes indeed finding the right methodology, uh, terminology is what takes the longest literature search. Uh, and also it helps you to sort the relevant from the irrelevant. As an example, uh, if you're just interested in general psychology, you can just stay within that bubble, like I showed you before. 
Um, but if you want also to explore more, you can then branch out later and, and also explore other subtopics. And finally, while Open Knowledge Maps is an interface for all scientific knowledge, it will always make it very easy to find and identify uh, open access content. How does it work? Open Knowledge Maps creates the maps based on the 100 most relevant documents for your search term. Relevancy is defined by the two search engines that are used and basically means subject similarity between your search term and the document metadata. Open Knowledge Maps then uses text similarity between the metadata of the 100 documents to create the map. The algorithm groups those papers together that have more words in common. As already mentioned, we want to go the open science way throughout all our uh, services and also throughout our organization. So all of our content is licensed under CC BY, so you can reuse the, no the knowledge maps that you create as you wish, as long as you acknowledge open knowledge maps. Our offering includes innovative search and discovery services. You have already seen the integrations for BASE and PubMed in the search interface. But we also offer a tool that enables you to visually explore the outcomes of research projects. It is called Viper and it's based on open air data. Open air is an EU funded open science platform. In October this year, we also have launched our institutional services, which basically enables institutions to integrate our visual search solutions uh, within their own systems, the so called custom services. We also have a wide range of training activities, events such as this one that you're currently attending are held all over the world at the moment, of course, mostly digitally. And the training materials for these events are also open and can be downloaded from our website and reused. Our software, which was awarded the Open Minds Award is also open source and is available on GitHub under the MIT license. And finally, we run community support and engagement programs. The most prominent one is the Enthusiast Program where our ambassadors and power users from all around the world uh, give workshops in their communities and provide us very valuable feedback to make us, yeah, to enable us to improve the tool. Open Knowledge Maps is run by a dedicated core team in Vienna with contributions from volunteers around the world. It started as a purely volunteer project and it's only since 2018 that some of the work is funded. All of our services are free and open and to maintain that this way, uh, we want to do this in a sustainable way. So uh, for that we have, uh, among other, our supporting members. These institutions are the first of hopefully many institutions that will come on board and support Open Knowledge Map with an, an, with an annual fee. And in return, the supporting members are invited to co-create the platform together with us. We also have an international board uh, and also interdisciplinary board of uh, advisors. They guide uh, our, our work as well. And finally, our enthusiasts that I had already mentioned before, they are power users and ambassadors uh, from all over the world. Since the inception of Open Knowledge Maps in May 2016, uh, we have grown to become the largest visual search engine worldwide. We had more than 1.2 million visits and more than 500,000 maps have been created today. Also many workshops were held. Uh, at the moment we are at more than 4,000 workshop, uh, more than 4,000 participants uh, worldwide. Now I'd like to give you some time for questions in case you want to ask something about Open Knowledge Maps or how Open Knowledge Maps works. Does anyone have a question? Paula, please. Paula, actually. Um, so I think one of them was about the annotations that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. So the new feature, is this the same annotation that sort of Net7 have been developing or is it purely one that's been developed uh, with, with OK Maps? Uh, no, this is actually Hypothesis, 
uh, which is another service that we have just implemented uh, within the Open Knowledge Maps from, uh, yeah, tool. So you've developed this with um, a different party sort of thing, but it was just... Um, I, uh, I think that uh, we did not develop this with them, we just have implemented this in our... Okay. Uh, so it's, it's also an open source solution, as far as I okay. know. Yeah. But if, you, if you make an annotation um, in a paper on Open Knowledge Maps, does it um will he will he be able to go back to that or is it just you know you can keep it and it'll come again the, the same annotation will be stored or will it disappear uh no it's it's stored actually so um to use this service you need to create an account at hypothesis so maybe uh i can i can share it in the chat later um and uh, there you can actually uh, access all the annotations that you make also on different platforms, because Hypothesis is also a service on its own, on its own and it's implemented in various other uh, yeah, uh, tools as well. That won't be part of GoTriple, the overall GoTriple platform, that's kind of separate to, to GoTriple, is it? Yes, yes, absolutely. This was now just introduction, really, how it is uh, on our own uh, services. And now the next part is actually uh, focusing on GoTriple only. Thanks, Paula. Actually, this is a very good transition. <laughs> I think there's so, just another question. Sorry, Michaela. Yes, sure. I just saw in the chat, uh, Deborah, who asked, uh, how are subjects classified? Um, I'm not really sure if I understand the question. How you mean how they are created? So the, the subjects of the bubbles, I guess. Uh, sorry, I was asking which is uh, the system that used to classify subjects to put them into the bubbles. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is um, what we do first is to request the 100 documents. Uh, and there we look at the metadata. From that uh, term document matrix of word frequencies is created. So basically how often a word occurs in each document. And for that, we mostly use title, abstract, subject keywords, sometimes authors and journal names. And uh, then a distance matrix is created. So to see how close or distant two documents are based on the similarity of word frequencies. And based on that, the document clusters are created. So documents that are very similar uh, are placed in the same cluster. And the bubbles basically are the, the clusters. Does this answer your question? Yes, uh, you said that it was a core occurrence that created the bubbles, but the, the question was how you classify subjects in a bubble, belonging to a bubble or to another. You, you, you said that you use two search engine, one for subject mm -hmm. working on the similarity of subjects and the other is on metadata, if you can explain it better. So um, basically what, uh, the two data sources, so this is PubMed and BASE, there we take the relevancy from them uh, to that, basically they send us the 100 more relevant uh, papers that uh, this is based on, on the similarity of the metadata and the search term that you entered. So this is one thing. And the second thing then is how the bubbles are computed. Okay. So this is a different thing. Yeah. No, no, no. I just said the two, there were two different layers, and I was curious about the first one. So, you use a search engine to do the indexing to, yes. uh, to, to retrieve, let's say, so subjects or things yes. uh, or keywords very similar to subjects. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Very nice. Very nice. Thanks for the question. Is there it's, any other question? I see Paula Forbes just put another question. I'll read it here. I was wondering if it's possible to import relevant papers that you are viewing in OK Maps into a library such as Mendeley or, you know, or Zoteros. Sorry. Um, to be honest, I'm not very familiar how you import uh, the the, uh, the the publications there. I guess it works with BibTeX, uh, and as far as I know, uh, this is not implemented at our uh, services that you can download the BibTeX, but. Um, <laughs> since uh, I mean base includes a lot of publications and you can check if it's possible there I'm actually not sure about that 
but uh, it's quite handy as, as a researcher it's quite handy when you're viewing you you've got this list in front of you and you've maybe see three or four that are relevant and for me I often save them to a library and they'll be in a, a specific folder and like it's nice to have this kind of quick way of doing that um, so yeah if it is possible it would be quite handy I know the likes of I use Mendeley and they have like a a little plugin so I don't I don't know if it's compatible with that plugin um, but yeah I suppose it depends on the API or whatever but yeah just just curious because it just makes life easier if you you're yeah absolutely do. I mean uh, to be fair uh, we are a fairly small development team so uh, this is also the reason why we didn't implement more nice features uh, until now of course uh, if it's possible if we get the funding uh, we will do this but at the moment, uh, I think that this is something that, uh, yeah, we cannot really promise to do. But of course, uh, it would be a very nice feature. Yes. It probably is still possible by clicking on the publication and having the publication. Yes. There, and then you could use the plugin. So it's probably, you know, there is a workaround, I think. But it'd be nice in a way if you could put two or three or even drag them all in, the ones that you like. You could just a quick way. But yeah, there'll, there'll be Absolutely. some way. No, you're yeah. right. Uh, so the direct way is not implemented, but you can do this uh, by, by clicking on the uh, publications directly. Yes. I'll take one final question because uh, we need to uh, move on. Felix? Okay, thank you. Um, I would have the question because I just tried this, the, the open knowledge maps with a keyword that's relevant to my research. And then I, I got a really nice result that I like, but I would say maybe only 10 of the, the papers that I saw are relevant um, that I would like to dig in deeper. And some of them, I mean, the other ones are were in the language that I don't speak, so I couldn't look at them. So what would you suggest that I go on? Because I do not really know if I have, let's say I found five or 10 papers that are going in the right direction. And um, what I, do I do then? Because I think I, I didn't understand where, which which keywords to take from the papers then, so I can dig deeper into the topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe um, instead of answering your question, maybe I will move on because I plan anyway to do a live tutorial now, not in our own interface of Open Knowledge Maps, but we have implemented uh, the same feature on Go Triple, and uh, I will show you a few examples there, and I hope that this will answer your question then. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you. Good. So um, just in the interest of time, uh, I will move on. I wanted to briefly first to introduce the Triple Project. It's a project financed under the EU Horizon 2020 program. At the heart of the project is the development of an innovative multilingual and multicultural discovery platform for the social sciences and humanities. The platform is called Go Triple. The goal of the platform is to provide a single access point that allows you to explore, find, access, and reuse materials such as literature, data, projects, and researcher profiles at a European scale. The project started in 2019 and it will run until 23. Also, after the end of the project, the triple services will be provided as part of OPERA's the research infrastructure supporting open scholarly communication in the social sciences and humanities uh, in the European research area. The Go Triple platform, uh, I will show you brief then uh, how it will work, how it works uh, at the moment. Uh, the development started at the beginning of this year and in October, we have released the first beta version. It is accessible via the link gotriple.eu. Currently, uh, we index 6 million items. So basically they have been ingested from uh, data providers. Uh, and at the moment it's only publications from 27 social sciences and humanities disciplines and in nine languages. This is important to, it is important to note that this is a work in progress. So uh, we are planning to include more data sets until the end of the project. The database is constantly amplified. And of course, before going to the demo, I should also say that uh, it's still in beta phase, so uh, it will not work perfectly, but it works already quite nicely. And um, I will show you in a minute um, in an example how it works. 
So first, I'm going to introduce you to the visualization and visual discovery features uh, that uh, Open Knowledge Map has developed here. So um, please bear in mind that all visualizations uh, especially the knowledge map and the stream graph that I'm going to show you, they depend on the search results in the Go Triple. Factors such as number of index documents and the metadata that is currently available have an impact on the quality of the visualizations. So just bear this in mind when you use the system. Now I'm going to start with the search term digital education. And uh, after pressing return or the button, the Go Triple platform uh, displays the search results. On the right side, you see the list of publications that have been found with this, uh, with this, with this term. And on the left side, you see already the first, uh, the, the, um, yeah, the first diagram that we have implemented. Uh, so here you can see the overview of results, how many papers have been, or how many resources uh, are available here for each year. You can also use this diagram to filter, for instance, now or display only the, the publications from 2020. You have also other filters that you can use, for instance, authors, disciplines, um, and also type of publications that are in there. On the right side, you can also click the visual tab, and there you can find more diagrams, enabling you to identify. Uh, now we have still the filter 2020 on. Uh, here you can identify the most prolific authors or the most prominent disciplines here with the, the, uh, that are represented here uh, in this year that we have searched for, and also the type of publications. So this gives you already a certain overview of a search term. And it enables you to identify, for instance, potential co collaborator, uh, collaborators, and uh, it gives you an idea of the cross-disciplinary identity of this particular field of study. Just very briefly to show you how it looks when you have found a paper that is interesting to you here. Again, you can click on it and inspect also the metadata, and then also go to the page uh, of the provider to directly download the paper. So this lets you do a first analysis of the topic, but what most news, newcomers to a research area are interested in, for example, a PhD student or a senior scholar venturing into a new field, is to get a deeper understanding of the subtopics and the concepts related to it. For this, you would normally have to read a lot of literature, but in GoTriple, we have included a visual discovery system that gives you both a topical as well as a temporal overview of your search term. So now first, I will show you the one with the topical overview, which is the knowledge map. Here with these two buttons, you can create uh, a knowledge map or a stream graph. As I said, I will start with the knowledge map and it will be directly created. Um, since this is part of the live tutorial, uh, my plan is to do this uh, in a bit of a um, visual way, way. So the idea is um, that we uh, try to find the answer of the question, how to visually explore research topics with Go Triple. Uh, the first example is a person who wants to dive into a known topic to find new, research, new, new resources. And this example is a PhD student who wants to find relevant literature for her thesis in the area of digital education. In particular, she's looking for current publications about how trends in digitization impact education in Europe. So going back on our interface, now you see also uh, again the knowledge map, very similar to the one that we have seen in the Open Knowledge Maps interface. Uh, again, you can start by just looking through the bubbles, digital technologies, digital literacy, you see a couple of uh, important topics. And indeed, by looking through the bubbles, you can see that here, uh, the, uh, the topic digital transformation of education is mentioned, which is relevant for this question. So you can again, 
dive in and uh, look manually through the papers. Uh, since we are on the lookout for trends, we can here in the search bar try to filter out trends. So basically, this uh, looks for this keyword within our uh, subset of publications. And indeed, we can then identify five probably relevant publications uh, for that that we can look at. Uh, the other uh, point was that we wanted to look at most recent publications. So here we can then filter by year and then automatically the most recent ones are listed at the top. This can help us already to speed up our search process quite well. To go back from the bubble uh, view, you can just click on the white space and then you zoom out again. And uh, the other focus that we had was to identify trends and impacts on education in Europe. So here, what we also can do is, of course, to search for Europe and filter that. If we go back to our bubble, Again, we see three papers where Europe is also mentioned as a keyword. By inspecting the other bubbles, then we can also discover here two additional publications talking about uh, Europe within the bubble digital competence or digital competencies. So here, for instance, here preschool education, degree students, prior knowledge and perception of digital competence could be a relevant publication for that. And the added value indeed is here that uh, we already get an idea that maybe digital competence or digital competences is also an important keyword or an important uh, topic uh, for our uh, question that we, we are trying to answer. So what we can do then is with this knowledge to go back to our search interface. Just a second. My mouse is lagging a bit. And here we could type in uh, the new topic that we found. So digital competence. I mean, I will not do it now because I think you have got uh, the idea what it is about, but then you can repeat the search, create again the knowledge map, and then you get again another, another overview of uh, the digital competence uh, search results subgrouped again in the topics that are relevant within that uh, uh, topic of interest. Good. This is the first example that I wanted to show you. Now, um, I have prepared a second example, but in the interest of time, I will skip it. Uh, anyways, uh, I have already talked about the parts here uh, in, in the previous training. So uh, what I would like to do now is just to give you a short summary of the knowledge maps on GoTriple at what uh, they provide to you. So here you can get a topical overview of research publications that is based on the 100 most relevant documents. So very similar to the one that is provided by Open Knowledge Maps directly. Uh, of course, it is based here on the GoTriple data, so it's focused on uh, SSH. And here, uh, again, uh, the relevancy is determined by the text similarity between your query and the article metadata. So the, the uh, technical uh, functionality in the background is basically the same. Good. Now, uh, um, there is a bit more time for questions uh, for this particular example. So if you have some questions, go ahead. No questions, wonderful. Good. Um, now I would like to introduce you the second uh, visualization uh, feature that we have implemented. Uh, so the knowledge map, as we discussed, uh, gives you a topical overview of the search term. But if you want to get a temporal overview to see the evolution of concepts over time or detect some trends in the publication, 
For this, uh, we have integrated the second prototypical visualization, which is the stream graph. I should say from the beginning that this is uh, a more uh, experimental, uh, more prototypical uh, solution than the open uh, the, the knowledge maps that we have implemented. So uh, also bear that in mind uh, when you try it out. Uh, on the background, stream graphs were originally de developed by Baron and Gottenberg for the New York Times. So in 2008, they published an unusual chart of box office revenues for 7,500 movies over 21 years. Um, and th that chart was based on a very similar visualization, uh, like that one here. And when we first uh, adapted it uh, for uh, the use in, in, in uh, search for uh, publications or for, for research resources, this was in the Linked Cut Plus project, uh, which was uh, with the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Uh, and this was basically uh, to, uh, to search, uh, uh, to enable a search, a temporal search of resources of one of the collections that they had. Now, um, I would like again to go back to our uh, Go Triple platform. So, again, uh, it's not as mature uh, as the example that I showed you before, but it works very nicely, especially with this example. Again, I will type in psychology and um, First, let go triple do the search. Here we have the search results page, and here, on the, by clicking on that button, then uh, our service that we have implemented creates then the stream graph. Here it is. So in the stream graph. Uh, we see a visualization of the main keywords related to the term psychology over time. Uh, it's the 12 most uh, used keywords in the, the found publications. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's publications from 19, 1997 to 2022. Each stream here represents a keyword and the height of each stream shows the number of publications related to it in a given year. It is important that the value always corresponds to the height of the stream alone and not the cumulated height of all streams that you see here. So uh, I should say here also, here is the number of documents and here uh, it's the publication year. So if we look here at history of scholarship, uh, again, by clicking into it, the list on the right side, uh, um, yeah, just shows then the publications that are within this stream. Here uh, in this example, if I hover over it with the mouse, you see this small box that opens up. And you see that for 2018, we have nine documents with the keyword history of scholarship. And in the stream overall, the cumulative number is 58 resources. And this is, these are the ones that you can see here. And again, by clicking in the white space outside, you can uh, zoom out again to see the whole. So the stream graph enables you to see different terms related to your search. Uh, and it can show you also specific tendencies. For instance, here, what we can see very nicely is that there are more recent publications on the Go Triple platform than later ones. So here we have a decisive peak of, of number of publications. And uh, this has to do with, with the data that is uh, included at the moment. So all the data sets, uh, there are not so many. And to the right side, analogously to what we have seen already before, we have here the possibility to search within the visualization and to sort the, the results. Right, so this is a, a very brief introduction on how it works. And here again, I would give you a short tutorial with an example so that you can uh, also uh, relate to it uh, 
how how this helps you really to recognize trends in research with uh, with this service. So the example is here a journalism researcher who is looking for resources documenting trends in news research of the past decade for an article. For that, I will go back to the go triple interface and type in news, click on search or press enter, and then create a stream graph. Again, here you can see at one glance the 12 uh, most frequent keywords within uh, the news uh, search results. Media is definitely one of the most uh, used uh, keywords here in total 101 resources. Political science, journalism, social media. Here again, we have uh, the temporal line. So here the publications start in 2004 that we have indexed here to 22. And uh, the example I showed you already before, how you can look at the documents over time, how many there are. Uh, here also, again, we see the tendency that there are more current publications rather than old ones. But well, for this example, uh, it's very interesting to see here the advent of the fake news uh, key uh, word. In fact, fake news became relevant something between 2015 and 2016. And there indeed we see uh, that term coming up in the publications. Then in the few years after, there were a lot of publications uh, uh, about that. And then in the end, it decreased again a little bit. So this, uh, for that, for that question, uh, it's also very good to see that you can indeed, if the data allows it, uh, recognize some trends. Uh, so here, the advent of the fake news uh, topic and, and that it was discussed heavily in research. Uh, again, here, if you want to look more deeply into that, you can then read the literature that is listed here. Also, what I forgot to mention, uh, Go Triple is, of course, focused uh, on uh, multilinguality even more than open knowledge maps. So here uh, we can already see that we have a lot of non-English uh, publications here, uh, which I think is also a very uh, outstanding thing and uh, important also. Uh, yes. So, um, and of course, uh, if you're interested in uh, reading the paper again, you can access it directly uh, from, from here. Nice. Okay, I think this was the main things that I wanted to show you in this demo. In summary, the stream graph gives you an overview of the most frequent keywords related to the search term over time. The stream graph is created based on the up to 1000 most relevant documents from the Go Triple data sources. And here uh, the ranking uh, happens to Solar as well. Uh, which also uses text similarity between the search term and document metadata. Good. Um, do you have any questions related to the stream graph itself before we go to the final wrap up summary? I think Felix had uh, put a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll read it to you. Is it possible to use the stream graph with base as data source, same source as OK Maps? Uh, at the moment, unfortunately not. We have implemented the stream graph uh, only uh, here in the GoTriple platform. And the GoTriple platform um, has, yeah, it is currently indexing uh, the data. But what I know, and please correct me if I'm wrong, my colleagues from Triple, um, I think that the plan is to, at least to some extent, uh, also include base data into GoTriple. So um, it should be, at least to some extent, be possible in the future. But at the moment, it is not possible. And uh, this feature, we didn't implement this on our own Open Knowledge Maps uh, yeah, system. So it's only available here on GoTriple. Yes, I confirm, uh, Michela. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Emily. And then there's another question from Deborah. 
are keywords up to trigrams? I'm not sure that I understand the question. Mm, Deborah, yes. maybe you can yes. I noticed that uh, the most frequent keywords in the uh, stream graph are one word up to three words. So I was wondering if uh, it was a matter of uh, unigrams, bigrams, and trigrams. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if I can answer that question. Um, what I know is that we identify the top 12 keywords uh, by absolute over accounts, but I'm not sure if those keywords are limited to some extent. I think that they are taken directly from the metadata and not changed, but I'm not completely sure. So um, if you want to, I can investigate upon that and uh, let you know. Just drop me uh, an email address or something and I can, I can get back to you for that. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Deborah. Are there any further questions? If not, we can move on to the final wrap up. So again, I want to remind you that Go Triple, the platform is still under development. It's a better version. On the one hand, uh, more data sources will be added in the future. So uh, we, we already have quite some data that you can already play around with it. But uh, yeah, the service can certainly be improved. And also our uh, uh, search, visual search services will definitely be improved until the end of the project. Right, uh, from my point of view, we can go on to the final, uh, final Q&A session and feedback. So for us, of course, it would be very great to hear from you uh, what you think of Go Triple and especially the visual search services? Do you think that they would help you to overcome the challenges that you currently have with literature search and discovery? Or what else would you need from such a tool? And of course, if you have any remaining questions or any other input, please uh, just let me know. Uh, raise your hand or write it in the chat. Uh, may I? Sure. Uh, well, for a general search engine like this one, uh, I think uh, it is fine to know that it's not everything what's offered here as a result, that uh, some of the results you get are limited. So this, well, it's, it's not popular as well to, to mention what's not good in the service you offer. But I think it would be fair to, 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 to uh, put a note in it. Uh, this is not all you have to, this is searching only this and this. Just short remark, thanks. Yeah. Um, what I can, just a second, I'm looking for it. Uh, what we have put here, at least in our visualization services is here that you can get more information. At the moment, indeed, uh, it's true that the information about the data source is uh, rather limited, but we are at the moment working on a better description for that. But of course, uh, we are really trying to, you know, uh, make clear what our service can provide and what not. But of course, the, the, uh, it is clear that with the limited or the more limited data source at the current stage of the project, this is a very important uh, um, restriction that should be made clear. So yes, uh, thanks a lot for this input. Uh, that is uh, very well received. Uh, well, in general, I think this is great for, for the visualization. For the visualization uh, it's really nice server, service. Uh, I just wonder, it takes 20 seconds to get the results. Are you working on that 20 seconds as well? Um, I think that the 20 seconds is what we can do at the moment with uh, the technology that we have. Um, uh, <laughs> it was 
funny because uh, earlier this year, Open Knowledge Maps was featured in a Nature article. And also due to other reasons, we had a sudden peak of, you know, that m many more users were using the service. And what I can tell you is that we are working on a parallelization of the services. At the moment, it works. But um, yeah, um, I think that once the parallelization is in place, it will be a bit quicker. But uh, it simply is, you know, the bottleneck of the uh, computation that needs to be done because basically the maps are created in real time, right? Uh, it goes a bit faster. Uh, if you have uh, put in the search term once, then of course it gets, uh, it, since it's cached, it loads a bit quicker. But yeah, I think that the 20 seconds is really something that is probably not feasible to be much quicker. At least this is what I have understood from that. And I'm not a developer, so sorry if it was not precise enough. <laughs> Any further question or any additional feedback? If not, I would move on to wrap up the session. So um, your support of course matters. If you like open knowledge maps, check us out, tell your friends and colleagues about us and let you know what you think. And of course, uh, also uh, try out Go Triple. Um, it's still a better phase, but uh, we, we are very much, uh, you know, keen to get your feedback uh, because uh, only with that we can improve really. And uh, yeah, this is basically what I wanted to tell you today. Thanks a lot for your attention and for your active participation. It was very great, I think. Um, I think that now I can move on to Lotti again. She wanted to close the session. Thank you very much, Michaela. It was very interesting. Uh, I'd like to share with you the short survey. I'll send it to you in the chat so you can go to Menti. So there it is with the following code. And please feel free to give uh, eventual comments or reactions to the training since we have a bit of time ahead of us. So I'll just share my screen so you can see the Menti. Okay. I'll just give you a few minutes to log on to the Menti. Uh, as I can't see my screen anymore, Michaela, would you mind uh, seeing if anyone writes in the chat if they have a problem with something? Yes, I will do. Thanks a lot. Okay, so thank you everyone for attending this training session and we hope uh, you enjoyed it. I sure did. Thank you, Michaela. And uh, this is just a very short survey that we want to share with you so that we can get your feedback on the, on the training. Okay, so I will start. And with the first question, there you go. So I don't see anyone on the mentee right now, but maybe it's because my screen is not updating it. Well, so I'm not sure what I am supposed to see. So I just logged into this mentee and it just said, thanks for your time. Yeah. Now you can go to the second question. Has it been, uh, sometimes it takes a few seconds. I, to... I can only click on finish. That's all I can, can do there. Uh, so you can go on to the question now. Yeah. That's a problem. Is it the case for everyone? No one sees the question. No, we can't. We had the same issue, but I refreshed the screen and then the question appeared. Ah, uh, okay. It's refreshing help. Okay, I'm still I'm seeing a few people logging in now. Is it working? Yes, yeah, sometimes you have to refresh it a bit more. So I'll just give you a few seconds to answer this question and then we'll go we'll move on to the next one. Okay, good. I can see the numbers uh, rising, so it means you managed to log in.
Okay. So I move on to the second one. The training session met my expectations. Okay. I can see a few results coming in. Okay, I'll move on to the next question then. In the session, I felt empowered to share my own ideas and ask questions. Okay, can I move on? I see additional answers. I'll wait a second. Good. The topic was relevant to my work. I'm refreshing the page every question. So I hope this helps uh, you to see it quickly. There we go. I'm just waiting for the last two answers since I repeat they're coming in. Next question. I'm interested in being informed of the coming sessions. I'll refresh it as well. There you go. Okay, I'll move on. If you have any additional remarks, you can write them here, questions, comments. I would say that we have no questions. I'll refresh just to make sure no questions or comments from the audience. It's because Michaela was so clear then. Okay, that's all for us then. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Just here you have the link to the YouTube um, channel of the Triple Project in which you can find all video recordings of the Triple Open Science Training Series and other video about the triple team, if you're interested. And we'll also upload the, today's materials on Zenodo and on the YouTube channel in the following days. As I told you before, I strongly recommend to go and visit the triple training events page uh, at the following address here, uh, since you can also find all materials and information on future triple events. Okay. So I think I can stop sharing my screen. I see there's a message in the chat. Ah, thank you, Francesca. Okay, does anyone have any additional comments or questions? I would say we don't. Thanks a lot, everyone then. Thanks everybody. I think everybody. we can wrap up, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.